Hi everyone, this is the Math 30-1 Trig 2 Review and this is question 5C. We're going to prove this identity, okay, uh, and this is the identity up here. Now when we take a quick look at this, um, the, the first thing, the, the method that I've been kind of trying to model for you as I was going through this review package here looks like this. First of all, I look at this and think, okay, do I see any Pythagorean identities? No, I don't. Do I see any obvious algebra here? Actually, no, I don't. There's no factoring to be done. There's no fractions to add together. Everything looks like it's been dealt with in that regard, and there's no expanding to be done here. So I move on. Are there any reciprocal identities that I can deal with? Nope. And then everything is already written in terms of sine and cosine. So that kind of deals with a lot of those, those uh, preliminary issues here. This is a very special type of identity here. The way to solve this one, okay, uh, I, I need to make the the left hand side look like the right hand side or vice versa here, okay? Now, in this particular case here, I'm gonna work with the more difficult side and that is going to be this one right here because the denominator has two terms in it, which automatically is gonna make it more difficult than this one to work with. So this is the side I'm gonna work on and I want it to look like the right. Now, probably the best way to do this in, in my head here, you're gonna hear people say multiply the denominator by the conjugate. Another way of saying it is, look, to make this side look like this side, I need one plus x to be up in the numerator, so I'm just going to put it there, okay? I am just going to put that there. So this is the, the left-hand side of this identity, okay? And I am going to put one plus, whoops, sorry. Need to make sure that those are separate. One plus the cosine of x up top there. Now, you can't just do that in the numerator. You gotta do it in the denominator as well. Okay, so I am multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator, and that's, that is often the, how this tool is described here. But I like thinking about it as just, I'm going to make it look like the thing that I want it to be. Now, in the numerator, there's not a whole lot I can do. I'm not even going to expand that out, honestly. I'm just going to leave it as sine of x times 1 plus cosine of x, because I can see already in the denominator that th these are binomial conjugates. When I multiply them together, I will get 1 minus the cosine squared of x. Now, now when I look at this, I can start to answer the questions, well, do I see any Pythagorean theorem? I uh, sorry, P Pythagorean identities. Yes, I do. The denominator is 1 minus cosine squared, and I know that that is equivalent to sine squared. So now this becomes the sine of x times 1 plus the cosine of x. Still haven't done anything with that, but 1 minus cosine of squared uh, sorry, cosine squared of x is going to become sine squared of x. Okay. Now, I ask again, do I see any Pythagorean identities? Now, don't be the person who says, oh, sure, sine of x is 1 minus cosine squared of x. You're just going to go backwards. Okay, we need to keep moving forwards here. So, no, there are no new Pythagorean identities here. Is there any obvious algebra to be done? Well, yeah. There's a sine of x here and, and two factors of sine x in the denominator. So, I can cancel one of those and I will be left with 1 plus the cosine of x over the sine of x. And that's exactly what we want because that was the expression on the right-hand side of this identity. So that's what we wanted to do.